Hey everybody, i got another video here for you. Uh, so this time it's a Whirlpool dishwasher. Now I did another Whirlpool dishwasher not long ago, but it was apartment uh, style dishwasher. So it's a little bit smaller in size, but the insides are a little bit different. So I wanted to show you guys this, uh, this guy. So I'm just gonna clean out the, the filters. They say that it's not spraying very well. Um, that's, that's always been a huge thing for dishwashers. Oh, we got a helper apparently. <laughs> um, so dishwashers, basically they have to uh, heat, which I've already made sure this one does heat fine. Um, so if, you're, if your stuff's not getting clean, um, yeah, it needs to heat, it needs to spray water. There's a way to test um, that your upper and lower spray arms are actually working. And maybe I'll show you guys that too. And uh, we'll, we'll look into how to clean up the filters. See you in a sec. Okay, so for checking the water movement, um, because you can't obviously see through the door, you, it's hard to tell what's going on inside. So what I do is pull out the top rack, just take a, a regular size cup, put it on the top rack facing up. That way the water will spray down from the spray arms and spray up from this spray arm that's attached to this rack and fill up this cup. Um, while it's running, let it run for uh, about a minute or, or two, just maybe see how much water is actually in that cup in about a minute, um, and then see how much is in there in about two minutes. The only thing is, is the, the way a dishwasher works is, it doesn't spray out of both spray arms at the same time. So it'll spray out of the bottom one and then it'll actually switch up to the top ones and go for a while. So if you open it up and you have barely any water in your glass at all, um, close it again, let the cycle keep running and keep checking it because it's, it's obviously not using the, uh, the upper spray arm yet. But when it does use the upper spray arm, you'll see the, the amount of water should be, uh, should be quite a bit. Then you can tell that your upper spray arms aren't plugged and the water is actually getting up to the upper spray arms. Um, as for the filters, I'm gonna take out this bottom rack, which just slides out. Okay, so we're looking right at the bottom. Um, this is the lower spray arm. So it has a little, um, lock mechanism here. All you do is you turn that just you know, maybe a quarter turn um, counterclockwise and this whole piece will pop off. So you can actually clean out um, all these little holes and just use a pick or something like that. Don't use uh, like a wooden pick or something like that because you don't want it busting off and, and plugging up these holes worse than they were. You can run water into this center hole and put it in your sink and you'll see the water will go in here and come out all the all the holes and it will wash out any of the crap that's in here. Um, as for you know the calcium buildup and stuff on here you can just just wash that off in the in the sink. Even let letting this whole assembly Sit in the uh, sit in some hot water and, and dish soap, or well, yeah, dish soap I guess for for a little while in the uh, in the sink. If it still doesn't come off and it's really heavy stuff, then you can use something like CLR or something like that on on these to get all that calcium out of there because we don't want it in there. Okay, next step is this little filter here and same thing just turn it about a quarter turn counterclockwise 
and this whole assembly comes out. It's it's similar to the to the other dishwasher I did, but it's not not quite the same. So a lot of stuff builds up up here because there's a little well, I don't know if you can see that. There's a coarse filter right in there that won't let stuff bigger stuff anyway uh, through. So a lot of stuff collects up here. Um, the stuff that does make it through those holes, you have a, a lot finer mesh filter here that'll... The problem with these is because it's such a fine mesh, all that calcium stuff tends to build up on here. And as you can see, it's it should be very see-through, but it's pretty clouded up because of all that calcium that's on there. So we'll definitely want to get that off there. A little scrub brush and, and some, some water will take it off. It's You don't need to scrub it hard or anything. It is just very <laughs> fine stuff, so we don't want to damage this at all. But yeah, we'll get all that stuff out of there. That doesn't help anything. Um, and there's one more here. This filter here. And that just sits in a couple tabs on either side of of the filter and that's it we're right into the bottom of the sump so maybe i'll just show you guys in there okay so that's right inside of there if you see anything in this area down here um, you can pick it out it doesn't it doesn't need to be down there the only thing that you really want down there is water so we've got a couple floaties there i'll pick out um, for the easy filter cleanouts, this is about as far as you go. You just clean all your filters and then put all this stuff back in there. Um, maybe one of these days I'll I'll do a, a little bit bigger teardown and we can take off this guy that leads to the uh, the upper spray arms if you have a plugged upper spray arm or something like that. But for now, we'll just do these filters. So I just use a little brush like that. It's, it doesn't have very strong bristles, so it won't uh, puncture the screens on this. But yeah, basically just scrub that out and uh, it'll be good. This one, look on both sides because it tends to build up with crap right around this inner ring. So we'll get rid of that and use fairly warm water. It doesn't have to be hot or scalding or anything, but fairly warm just to get everything off. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with the uh, with the spray arm. You can let that water run through there. If you notice the water's coming out pretty good out of these holes, um, more than likely there's nothing, nothing blocking it. Um, but just turn it over every now and then and just make sure that it's not building up with a bunch of stuff. There's also two smaller ones on, on the bottom side of this. That On this one it's actually plugged. Um, those need to be cleaned too because those wash all the, uh, all the water that's sitting on the base of the dishwasher down into the filters. So if these are plugged, it's, all that stuff's just going to sit there. So. I'll use a pick and get those all cleaned out. All right, we're back here. So I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I didn't use um, any tools for this whole thing. I used that pick, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't really consider that a tool, but um, I ended up actually using uh, a fork <laughs> to get uh, a little bit of calcium that was in there, out of there. Because the tines on a fork are kind of perfect size for that. So, yeah, this whole job is you don't need any special tools, nothing like that. You can just do this at home by yourself, and then it's, it's not, uh, not a tough one. So putting this back in, you just want to slide it um, under these two. There's a little notch here and a little notch here. And you want to slide this under those. You'll see when it when it fits in there, it fits in there nice. It sits down like it should, because um, you don't want anything getting past this filter here. So this guy is all cleaned up. Put that back in. So 
you can just kind of turn it until you find it. it. It'll drop down just a little bit. When it drops down, then you can give it your quarter turn clockwise and that will lock it in. This guy um, will just sit on top of here. You have to turn it a little bit to get it. It'll drop down too. Once it drops down, give it half turn, quarter turn. You'll see it, you'll hear it snap in and you're good. Um, what I also do is I also make sure that these little tines here that hold in the heater aren't uh, aren't sitting up because sometimes they can bend up and they'll actually hit the spray arm as the spray arm goes by. Most of the time you wouldn't know it, but if your spray arm's running, hits one of these and it just sits there like that the whole cycle, uh, things aren't gonna get very clean over here or over here. Right here they'll be nice and clean. <laughs> anyway, that's how, uh, that's how we clean the filters on uh, this Whirlpool dishwasher. Like I said, it's a very easy job, no tools required, um, and you should be doing this. Uh, it depends, I guess, how much you're, you're using your dishwasher and whether you know, kids are, are loading the dishwasher <laughs> or not. Um, I would say every three months I would at least look at them and uh, see if need be uh, to clean out at that point. If not, you know, try checking them every six months if that's still good then you know do it once a year when i do these um right after i clean all these out what i will do is run um, a vinegar clean out and i'll show you what that entails okay so after um, i've done the, the clean out i then take the glass that i used to test um, the upper spray arm water movement um, and I fill it, uh, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a cup of just plain white vinegar. Not any other kind of vinegar, just plain white vinegar. Fill it up three quarters, put the glass facing up on the top rack once again. Close the door with nothing else in the dishwasher. Um, now what you want to do, everybody's dishwasher is going to have different options and I don't know, you know, even if it is Whirlpool, it'll still have different options. But basically you want to pick the hottest cycle you can pick. So if you use a heavy cycle, heavy is, is usually um, the hottest cycle. So you pick heavy, you can, some of them you can uh, push high temp wash, sani rinse, basically pick all of those. Um, and then start the cycle. It's gonna be a longer uh, cycle, but what'll happen is this cup will overflow throughout the cycle and all that vinegar will get used through the spray arms. It'll get used down into the sump, down into the drain pump, uh, the drain line, even the sink connections, um, which is, is everything that we want to clean out, but we can't get to. All the calcium that builds up in there, vinegar will get rid of that. There's other other things out there. Um, there's something called glisten. I've used that in the past. But if you're just you know, not wanting to go to the store and spend a bunch of money, um, you can just use uh, vinegar. It works great. I've used it probably for about 20 years now, so it's it's uh, it's tested and. and uh, Works very well, anyway. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.